Hello, and welcome to Arts and Entertainment. With Chris and Randall. I'm Chris. I'm Randall. And welcome to the show. Uh, today, uh, Randall is going to talk about his views on photography and whether or not it's an art form, which <laughs> is going to cause a lot of discussion. And because it's going to cause a lot of discussion, I want you guys to uh, comment. And the best way to comment or subscribe to hear more of these outrageous things like because you can't dislike it and to share uh randall what's the best way to give your two cents or your feedback uh, our facebook page day? our feed feedback give us feedback uh our facebook page is pretty popular arts entertainment with chris and randall uh check out our website chris and uh our podcast is like a real podcast you could download it subscribe to it uh if you're watching this on video Excellent. So Merriam-Webster's dictionary defines art as the conscious use of skill and creative imagination, especially in the production of aesthetic objects. Uh, dictionary also defines a work of art as something that is produced as an artistic effort or for uh, decorative purposes. Now, Randall, I know you're not alone. I know that as early as 1853, uh, in the Photographic Society of London, one of the members complained that this new technique was uh, too literal to compete with works <laughs> of art because it was unable to elevate the imagination, the conception of photography as a mechanical, mechanical roaring medium never fully died away. So I want to just say something before we get into Randall's uh, discourse, which is we accept the fact that art is considered I'm sorry, that photography is considered an art form. And I have gone to many galleries and I am very fluent in looking at photography in art museums. Uh, Randall is an excellent photographer, a gifted photographer. Uh, the view that Randall holds is not representative of the view I hold. And with <laughs> you don't even know what view I hold yet. <laughs> I don't know what view you hold, I know I never agree with you. So anyway, all that preamble set aside, Randall, Share us your view. Well, just let me start with an overview of the whole debate. I mean, this is an old debate, as you've uh, already pointed out, Chris, going back, what, 150 years, 200 years? <laughs> uh, is photography an art form? I don't know. What was that? Five years ago, 1850? No, 100 years. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 180-plus years, yeah. Yeah, okay. It's not – so it's kind of old, this debate. photo is, what, 1837? It's the Durga type. So it's, it's an old <clears throat> argument. It's an old argument. Well – Yes. Yeah, so when photography first starts, you know, uh, a, f a photographer is able to very easily uh, capture an image that it used to take a painter, you know, m maybe out months to make. Uh, and the photographer could just make it very quickly and easily. Um, I mean, you know, the early cameras weren't that easy. But and then the image the photographer made was a superior image to what many painters could make at the time. Uh, because it was, it was. Uh, I mean, photography is not perfect. You know, when people take a picture, the lens distorts the image a little bit. You know, the uh, not all, every wavelength of light is captured on the film the same way the eye would look at it. Um, and you know, our eyesight. You know, if you look at uh, uh, the biology of eyesight, uh, the, what you see, Chris, is not um, actually what's out there. Your brain is constructing some of what you see uh our color perception is not actually very good um our color so a lot of our color perception is invented in the brain like you can there are optical illusions that will illustrate that they're very interesting uh uh so your color perception is not actually that good um but so photography so 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 in the beginning of photography when photographers were taking these pictures uh yeah, a lot of the um, old guard in the arts would say, oh, this is not real art because it's too good, right? It's like the, the image is too perfect. I mean, it's, you know, in a lot of ways, I think, um, just taking pictures, I think in a lot of ways, uh, photographs are superior to our own vision. So you could take a, so like I said, your brain is reconstructing the image. Uh, whatever you see, your brain is constructing it. There, you know, you have blind spots in each of your eyes. Uh, you're not perceiving colors accurately. Um, so, and your eye, you know, your eyes are constantly moving around, taking in a scene. So you, you're actually not, um, 
Because when we look at a photograph, we think our eyes are seeing the same way a camera sees, which is you're seeing everything coming into the lens all at once. But that's not actually how our eyes work. We're actually, our eyes are actually uh, constantly scanning and reconstructing everything in front of us. Um, uh, it's constantly scanning and reconstructing everything in front of us and putting it all together. And, and we think we're seeing uh, like a camera might see, which is everything in front of us. But we're not really seeing that way. Um, so yeah, so in some ways, a, photo, a lot of ways, a photograph is like superior to what we're seeing. So, so in the early days of art, they're looking at these photographs and they're astounded, <laughs> and they're saying, and it's it's too perfect. I mean, I can see like how their minds would be blown, you know, because just imagine, you know, uh, for most of human history, you never see. I mean, maybe on a painting. So you look at a painting from the era, and the paintings are very good quality. You know, they're they're very detailed. Uh, but even paintings, uh, you know, you can tell they're not photographs. They're not the the quality of a photograph is not it's not the same amount of detail. And in fact, you know, uh, painters who work on these paintings, you know, from any era, they're not going to be um, putting as much detail in every piece of the painting as in the most important parts of the painting, right? They're going to save some time, like painting the backgrounds, painting the corners. You know, you're not going to you're not going to go nuts on like the little tiny, tiny parts of the painting that uh, that viewers don't care that much about. But with a photograph, every single inch of the photograph has like almost the same detail. <laughs> so that's that's uh, psychologically very disorienting, I'm sure, for for people that never saw photographs before. Um, so yeah, so in the early days of photography, uh, I like that quote you dredged up, Chris, about. Um, somebody saying photographs are too perfect to be art is that that encapsulates everything I just said uh, but yeah so in the early days of photography some f uh, some art movements thought that the best way to make uh, photographs into fine art was to take blurry photographs <laughs> can you imagine so there's a lot from from especially uh, from I want to say the mid 1850s to uh, to maybe the early 1900s there's like this there's like all these art movements where their photographers are taking blurry photographs and they're trying to call it fine art and you don't you don't see that anymore today chris i don't think i mean well, there ha every now and then an aesthetic a, like that does pop up but it's not like it was back then you raise a good point which is that uh, distortion which we normally normally think about in music and less in the uh, visual art Actually, no, v distortion in the visual arts, too. But like when I think of rock and roll, it, it has distortion and that distortion, those extended notes, those notes that are played out of tone become part of the artwork in. Or impressionism, which is rising concurrently with the rise of the camera in the 19th century and even abstractionism in the 1940s through early 60s is about the aesthetic of incomprehensibility. So it is interesting to think that uh, photography just picks up on on that, that distortion, on, on the lack of accuracy as being a form of art. Certainly today, uh, I still see photographers, I know photographers who will deliberately oversaturate, blow out, will deliberately do what would be objectively a bad thing because it lacks accuracy but by doing so create something that that a lot of people would say is a work of art because it is willing to break with uh, trying to be an exact replica of the way we actually see the world. Yeah, yes. From an aesthetics point of view, you see this over and over throughout the years um, where this idea that making something less accurate to reality makes it more artistic. I mean, <laughs> it's a weird idea, actually. I mean, it's like... Uh, I don't know how much merit it really has, but you see it pop up over and over. Um, I do think that uh, abstract art, impressionistic art, it's a direct, uh, it's directly influenced by photography, by the advent of photography, because you have photography get invented, people are going around taking all these pictures, and painters suddenly say, well, we can't compete with photographers anymore, because painters, you, their job used to be the job of the photographer. Okay, so for instance, if you look at... Uh, paintings from pre-18 the pre-1850s um i want to say like even throughout the 1800s a lot of 
the job of painters was the job of photographers. People were painting uh, pictures of rich people, rich people's houses, rich people's pets, um, portraits, basically. They were portrait photographers for the most part. Um, and now people just do that on their own with their cell phone. <laughs> you know, it's like... Well, but you still see portraiture. I mean, every president of the United States has still a painting of themselves. In fact, many great, powerful people, it's still a sign of status not to get a... I mean, yeah, a photograph of yourself can be a sign of status, but I still think there are paintings. People do get paintings done, and that is still continuing a very regal and noble uh, heritage. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, getting your portrait painting tradition still going on but in the prison of the United States. it is interesting to point out that when you look at the infamous or famous Obama portrait, <laughs> it, it's the first one to really break with realism. Right. You see, and the reason they're doing that is because that's a centuries-old tradition that's going back to the advent of photography where painters are like, they're thinking, well, what are we supposed to do now, now that there's a camera? Uh, yeah, I mean, and it makes total sense. that painting looks, that portrait of Obama looks much more like a painting of Obama than a portrait of Obama. The background the choices, the descriptions. Right. There's one of Queen Elizabeth that was recently taken, I'm sorry, not a portrait, a portrait of her recently taken that caused a lot of controversy for that same reason. So it is interesting to point out that in the world of contemporary portraiture for painters, there is no longer as much a desire to compete with a photographer, but to become more interpretive in how you render. Right, They're I mean the like height- sculptors anymore. Right. The height of that might be, um, I want to say Picasso, who who paints, who makes paintings that cannot possibly be taken by a uh, camera. I mean, they're very they're very much interpretive. Um, it's very much especially of, uh, yeah, cubism because cubism has no respect for real life physics or anatomy. Right. Exactly. Uh, and I want to say another debate that goes on in photography is. Um, Oh God, I can't remember now, Chris. <laughs> I was gonna say something. <laughs> Give me a minute. Well, I just want to pick up while you're thinking about this, which is there's also photorealism, where artists actually use photography to uh, form their own paintings. A very big movement in the late '60s, right through the '80s, where they would use photo cells, or even artists like Robert Rauschenberg, who would incorporate photographs into is art or warhol and a lot of the pop artists of the 60s kind of really and warhol is both a painter and a photographer and an illustrator so he and rauschenberg are really fascinating because they integrate the two into one format you know which which to me actually shows the fungibility of photography as art did you remember what you were going to say now no let's move on chris Do you well have then another... if then i would ask you that uh, then that's fine but then you do see artists using there's a synergy here because you have artists in the 20th century who are using photography as a way of informing their own art by either incorporating actual photos or painting on photos or, or looking at the way photos work and then you have photographers as early as the 19th century learning the classical techniques of painting composition and just using those elements in their photography so that by the point in the 21st century, there is a lot of synergy where it's hard to really tell if uh, painters, I'll use painting, are where do the line between painting influences photography and photography influences painting? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could see, like, if you look at uh, the two art forms uh, from the beginning of photography, you can see that they're really influencing each other as time goes on. Um, I mean... There, you know, when you go back to say something like Vermeer, you see that uh, he's probably using some kind of camera obscura technique to uh, to make a better um, to make a better painting. Uh, so I mean, what even I explain what camera obscura is for those of us who are like, what is that camera? Oh well, it's like uh, he's probably you get a little dark and you get a little room that's dark, and then you put a hole in the wall, and then you put your subject on the other side. And then, uh, 
you you light up your subject with a lot of light, okay? Maybe you don't have electric light because it hasn't been invented yet, so maybe there's a window on the other side. And then the light comes through the hole and it projects an image on the wall of what's in the other room. It's like you're making like a you're making like a camera. It's like a, it's like the whole the whole little darkened room is a camera now. And it's possible Vermeer or somebody, because if you look at their art, it looks very uh, photographically realistic. You know, it looks, uh, the proportions are all great and everything. So how did he do that? Well, a lot of people think he used some kind of camera obscura technique to make that. And, and probably a lot of painters were using techniques like that. Um, like, I don't know, starting from the 1700s, maybe earlier, who knows? But it's, it's a, I mean, it's not a hard technique. You only need a hole in the wall, <laughs> No, and it's, it's it's you don't even need a camera to make photographic art. I've been watching. There's a number of artists who just take a uh, paper and development, and they just expose it to light or to nature. Uh, I'm not very good on the technique of explaining as you were in Karen. It's photographic paper. Photographic paper that they just quickly expose to light or to water, to to the environment, and it creates this very fascinating textures and light. I just saw that at the Getty Center, which has, a, if you're ever going to New, to LA, uh, the Getty Center has a great photography collection. Uh, there's a quote here, and I'm really curious. Well, I, I wanted to, can I just say what, I, oh, I remember yeah, what yeah. I was going to say. So there's also, a de there's also a debate within photography. It's been going on forever. The debate is, when we take a picture of something, how representative is it really of reality? Now, I've already talked about how uh, you know, the camera distorts, you know, the camera's not capturing every wavelength. Our eye really doesn't see that well. I think that, you know, my argument that the camera sees better than the eye, I'm sure that a lot of people take issue with that. But I think that's true, um, objectively. Uh, but yes, within photographic circles, there's been a lot of debate over whether or not photographs represent something realistic. How realistic is the representation? Uh, for instance, I'll take a, a good example is Gary uh, Winograd. I think I'm yes. getting his name right. He's a famous yeah. street photographer. He lived in New York. He's one of my favorite uh, street photographers. He was of the opinion that uh, that he once said something like um, uh, he he doesn't know what anything's going to look like in a picture until he takes a picture of it. And then when he looks at the picture, it's it's like its own thing. It's like it has nothing to do with reality. The picture is its own thing. is has no relation to what he took a picture of, and he doesn't know how the picture is going to turn out until he sees it. So he, so Winno, Winograd was very much of the uh, opinion that photographs don't really represent reality. And and but he, you know, was famous for taking pictures of things that looked pretty realistic because <laughs> he was a street photographer. <laughs> Um. Yeah, and you know, well, that's, also that's just a good point. I mean, there's a. You reminded me of a quote by a, it's an art critic named John Berger, uh, in his book Way of Seeing, and he says, unlike any other visual image, a photograph is not a rendering, an imitation or an interpretation of a subject, but actually a trace of it. Uh, no painting or drawing, however, naturalist belongs to its subject in a way that a photograph does. And I really like this idea of seeing it as a trace of it, because a trace of anything approximates, but I would argue that the camera still is still has some subjectivity because depending on the angle in which you photograph something, you control the aspect of it. I can light something, I can frame something, and there's so many ways of how you look on a camera that you, the viewer, then sees it as such. But it is interesting to think of it as a trace. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I well, I've already made the argument that I think that cameras are objectively uh, more accurate than the eye. I mean, I think it's like a spectrum, you know? It's like uh, how accurate is the image you're looking at to what was out there? I mean, I think photographs are are objectively speaking just the most accurate i will say though that um you know photographers can do a lot in post-production so for instance ansel adams a famous ansel adams his works his landscapes especially were all uh um he worked on them for many hours in the dark room <laughs> after he took them 
So a lot of people think that something like what Ansel Adams did, he just like took a picture and then, you know, that was it. Uh, it's far from the truth. Um, and I, you know, I don't know if I've ever really read anything about Ansel's attitude on this subject. Um, but I would suspect that Adams would think that he would probably, be, I would think maybe he'd be where I am, where it's like, you know, the camera is good at capturing reality, but, you know, nothing is 100%. Well, I mean, I mean, I know, could, even, you know, I could even see well, making an Adam, argument that Adams, for those of you who don't know, who he was was a a nationalist photographer who worked, I think, a lot of the times for National Geographic time in life, and he took amazing black and white photos, often of things like the Rockies, mountains, uh, nature, and uh, I don't think he ever worked in color, but he his work, which is objectively nature. Uh, has a certain epic quality to it. Right. Well, he would take, he used a very large camera, very large format, and uh, and he worked on his images a lot in the darkroom. I mean, the detail in his photos is unsurpassed. I mean, it's, it's, it's far larger than digital photos today, probably. And you can always tell in Anne's labs. He's a high, you know, and he's one of the few photographers without being, say, gimmicky, just the way he frames something that any one of us could frame, but through his lens, things tend to look larger and more epic in, than they would through true. my lens. True, true. And I'll, I'll give a little, uh, I'll bring Ansel into this discussion a little bit by saying this. Um, you know, when people look at an Ansel Adams uh, landscape, they usually think they're looking at a, a very accurate representation of what Ansel Adams probably saw with his eye, which is probably not not true. <laughs> so uh, there you go. So then what about the fact that also we conceive of art as something that cannot be reproduced? It is a singular object, whereas a photograph can be reproduced infinite amount of time. Well, you're talking that. about fine art, right? I mean, I right. think that um, we had this discussion on another show. I'm not sure which one, but um, you can almost... about this with the, with the I think the... Uh, with the, uh, yes, we've talked about it before. I think, I th yeah, I think you can almost practically define fine art as art that can't be reproduced or is difficult to reproduce. <laughs> and so there's a problem with photography in that, you know, photography really, a lot of photography really wants to be fine art. There's a subject, there's a class of photography called fine art photography. You know, if you Google it, you'll, you'll see fine art photography, which is a lot of like really pretentious pictures of like really artsy kind of subjects and things. Um, but yeah, so fine art almost you can almost define it as as not reproducible and the problem with photography is it's it's so easy to reproduce. I mean, Ansel Adams can take a picture of a landscape and work hours on it in the dark room. Uh work hours just setting it up and, you know, trying to take a picture and taking lots of pictures just to get to the perfect shot. And then after the the photograph is done, he can make infinite copies of it fairly easily. <laughs> And you see Ansel Adams photos everywhere. Um, so, yeah, it's a uh, – I mean, I, you know, I, think I don't think the I reproducibility think is something. the argument, though, personally, because, look, art can be reproduced. I can have a poster of a, of a Matisse or a Picasso. Poster art, which is considered a fine art as well as a commercial art, can be reproduced. I, I just think it's probably better to – I accept photography as a fine art, but I think it just destroys the concept – that it can't be reproduced. And I think that's a flaw based on the limited technology of the time. That's, that's my counter argument to you on that. Wait, your counter argument is that? Uh... that it, it's a flaw to see art as something that can only, that can't be reproduced. Well, just fine art, I would say, fine art. Fine art, yeah, but I'm saying that that, that should be the def definition of fine art. I think photography challenges that, just in the same way that internet art now challenges that, I think. At day's end, what photography shows us as much as commercial art is now considered a fine art shows us, or reproductions of, is that no, it, it's just it's 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 as much an art form because it can be that should not be the defining aesthetic. Well, the, or it should not be an aesthetic rule to define well, the, what is fine art and commercial art. 
Well, the way I see it, the problem with fine art is uh, you need like an original, and with photography, there's never an original. <laughs> I think the original is is the actual shooting of it. I mean, I would argue to your point that you, it, what makes it original isn't that it it would make it's not that it can't it would makes the originality isn't anything more than the fact that the shot that moment was taken by that person, and not only was that shot taken by that person, but anything done to that photo as well is the artistic process. The editing of that photo is part of the artistic process. So that I think it's not really whether or not it can be reproduced in, ad infinitum, it's how that first print comes out that is the moment that it becomes fine art. You see where I'm going with that? Yeah, but you know, uh... A painting, there's like a painting. There's like a first painting, and you take pictures of that. With photography, it's just not like that. I mean... Well, but I'm saying that the actual first print, the first print that, that is cleared by the people who put that photo together, whether it's a team of people or one, but that first print... But here's the, the thing. Here's the thing. That first... that, that's the moment of conception. Well, yes, maybe. But that first print... Um... You can make other prints. I mean, I don't know. Maybe right, but I'm I just guess saying, once you've aesthetically said, this is the photo, this is the shot I'm going to go with, this is how I'm going to go with it, even if you do nothing to it and you go, this is the raw photo, but every photographer takes thousands of photos of a subject, but only shares a handful or sometimes only one. Well, I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the problem with that is like the, the print is going to fade eventually and you're going to want to make another copy of it, and you're going to go back to the negative. And so the real original is the negative. But the and negative... Really is, so the negative would be the, the original, okay. Right, but the negative is not fun to look at. <laughs> That's no, the but problem. The, but the no negative, one's going to want to buy the negative. But the negative is where it starts, and then how that negative is treated is also part of the process, I would argue. I mean, these are other elements. The other thing that people talk about is, is it really more of a craft and not an art form? Because like right now, everybody takes photos and everybody puts their photos on Instagram. So the question becomes, is everybody posting photos on Instagram an artist? Well, I hear this argument a lot. And the way I look at it is, um, yeah, sure. There's a lot of art. There's a lot of people making art. But the question you're at, you're really asking is, is it good art? <laughs> So, so yeah. So you have well, all these hundreds of yeah. Good point. Good point. So you have all these hundreds of people taking pictures of Instagram on Instagram of like their lunch. I mean, sure, it's art, but it's not great art, you know. So that's 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 what I would say. Well, it's interesting. I have two friends who are professional photographers. They, one is a photojournalist. The other one uh, does some photojournalism, but also does like performance work. So he'll film like ball he'll shoot ballets and musicians. Uh, both of them, though, are excellent photographers in their own right, and also they'll just shoot things for their own amusement. And and they've been doing it forever. And they they use top of the line. They are real photographers, and every so often they will post on Instagram their actual edited professional work. And every so often, when I even get together with them. I will give them my iPhone XR and ask them to take a photo of me. And it's so clear to me that it's not just the technology that defines the artist, in uh, at least in, in, in photography, it's the eye and the sensibility that informs it. I mean, you can give the literally an iPhone to just like a really excellent photographer and they will take a shot like you will never take. And I could give an amateur all of the photography equipment they need and it will look good, but it won't look great. So I do think some of it also is just something that is internalized over the time of being a professional artist. Well, sure, there's, a, there's, a, there's an aspect of skill involved. I mean, of course. I part mean, of it is, I would argue, intuitive, and part of it can be cultivated. Um, I don't know. I I think almost all the photography is. Uh, it's probably I don't know. I don't know, Chris. I guess that's a that's like where does talent come from, right? I think most of it is uh, just practice, trial and error, 
Yeah. You know, in the Fair digital enough. era, in the digital era, um, it's it's people can be such much better photographers than they could be in the film days because you could take a picture and instantly look at it, and then you can change settings and take it again. I mean, it's just the learning curve is is uh, the time to learn is so much smaller now. So, um, which is not a bad thing inherently. No, no, it's great. I mean, the, you know what? There's a lot of great pictures out there now. I mean, it's it's like if you like looking at if you just like looking at pictures, it's, it's a great time. Well, I mean, it's certainly possible that there will soon be a fine arts photographer who only works, say, with their cell phones. I'm sure there. I'm sure there already are, Chris. They already are. There's probably an <laughs> exhibition, which then means that you know maybe it's become almost like a folk art. Or an outsider, or or maybe how we define it will change because of the video camera. It's really fascinating to think. It's it is a very it, even though it is uh, almost two hundred years old photography, it is still a very new art form. And that's why I think it might be very hard to apply the same aesthetic rules to define it as we would something like painting or sculpture and music, which are you know thousands upon thousands upon thousands upon years old. Well, I'll just say, aesthetically speaking, photography, it's it's a fascinating art because you you create almost, I mean, some people work on photos for hours after they take it, I mean, but I mean, most of the photo is done when you press the button. <laughs> so it's like an art form that takes like one second to make it work. I mean, it's 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 I, unique I in that respect. I disagree because there's so much that it takes to set up a shot, and you know this. It takes a lot to set up a shot, and then it takes a lot to edit a shot. I mean, some shots you do get automatically and without thinking, but even those still have to be cropped, edited, lit. It, it it's not like. I mean, you're a very lucky day where you just take a photo of something randomly, don't do anything with it, and go, hey, that's awesome. Well, sure, but, I mean, I think the best photos are always the ones that you get in camera. But, you know, regardless, I, I think that almost every photographer, most of the work is done when they press the button. I mean, uh, you might take a lot of time afterwards in editing it, but um, most of the work's already done. I mean, if you if you don't get what you need when you press the button, then it's going to be tough to uh, fix it later. It's going to be tough to get oh, it later. That, you can say that most of it is taken with a sculptor when they chip the rock or a painter when they uh, roll the brush or a violinist when they hit the cord. I mean, that's true, but I just think that there's more going on than just that one moment. That's all I'm saying. I know the moment. Well, I don't know. I, I'll just say time. I don't know because I've been taking photos for a lot, long time, and I think that um, one of the strengths of photography, one of the unique unique aspects of photography, is capturing like a moment. I mean, I've I like to just I'm I'm a, a horrible shutter bug a lot of times. I mean, some photo every photographer has a different aesthetic, a different way they they work, and some photographers they take very few pictures. They're like they're like photographers from the old film days, you know where. <laughs> Where they try to take like ten pictures a day or something. Now I want to say uh, Gary Winograd. You know he was he was a shutter bug. You know he died with hundreds of rolls of film undeveloped. You know sitting in his apartment somewhere. I think he's, they're still undeveloped from what I heard. Um, but uh, I like to take a lot of pictures. You know and a lot of, and you know you just you're just trying to capture moments. It's like it's like it helps to have ADD and just. Uh, and just like kind of like be quick and and if you and you know you develop your eye over time by taking pictures and looking at things later and sometimes you just see something that'll be a good picture and you hit it and later on you look at it and you go oh yeah I got that or, or later on you you look at it and you say oh wow I don't I don't even remember getting that but uh, that was amazing and and you're capturing these moments that sometimes you didn't even know they happened you know, and you look at the picture later and you think, wow, I didn't even know that happened. I don't remember that at all. And you've just you've captured this one. So, you know, and it's and it's and it's like a, it's a split second in time that you're capturing um, a split second that maybe people present didn't even know happened. <laughs> and well, that, so, you know, it's a unique I think it's a unique art form because uh, I don't think that applies to any other art form. I mean, every other art form, you must be, you have to be much more deliberate. So well said, Randall. So well said. Uh, 
Randall, I know, can you maybe put a link to your own photography uh, link so people want to look at your Oh, photos? yeah, sure. I'll link, I'll link to my uh, photography website. Sure. Well, I, I want to thank you for sharing this. It, it, I, parts of what you're saying, I definitely agree with, and parts of what you're saying, I don't. But you certainly <laughs> elaborate the way that we look at it. So I want to thank you for bringing Well, wait, up. before we end the show, can I answer yeah. the question of the show? Like, is it art? Please. Yeah. Um, I will say photography is art, but it I don't think it's a fine art. I think trying to make photography into a fine art is like shoehorning it into the world of fine art. And I don't know. I guess that's it. This is all I have all to right. say. All right. Well, thank you for sharing your truth. I may don't share your vision, but I appreciate the you having this discussion. And I'd love to know what our viewers and listeners are thinking. If they are on your page, they're on my page, they want to make a third argument. You folks know how to reach us. So until then, I'm Chris. I'm Randall. Be safe and be well. Bye. Bye.